The bobsled team is weird. I'm confused. I'm scared. What was that? Really weird. What? Are, are you from this wave? You at the back of the screen? As in, it breaks the rules of the game. It's a confusing mess, and all around just the strangest zombie in Plants vs Zombies 1. Let me explain everything that makes them so strange. Be warned, this video is going to get quite technical. <laughs> but let's start with something easy. The bobsled team is just really uncommon. It appears in four levels in the adventure mode, one minigame, and that's it. Seriously, it is the only zombie, other than Zomboss I guess, to not appear in Survival Endless. Considering that that is where the majority of the player base spends their post-game, it makes it an odd exclusion and practically dooms it to being forgotten about. Even on levels that can have bobsled spawn, you're not guaranteed to see them. A Zomboni needs to make it a couple of tiles across the screen before that can happen, which is not too common if you use Spike Weed or really just any instant kill plan. Like Chomper, for instance. And people are always shocked when they see a Chomper killing a Zomboni, but do you know what I find weirder? This. But this one isn't talked about nearly as much, even though it's much crazier. Do you know what doesn't work though? A squash? Yeah, these guys make literally no sense, and that's without even getting into the niche technicalities and oversights that come with the bobsled team. Before I can get into the main bobsled mechanic that impacts any percent speed runs, I first need to explain the waypoint system, which is how zombies are spawned. The vast majority of Plants and Zombies levels are divided into waves, most having 10, 20, or 30 total waves. A wave could be made up of just one zombie. It could be made of two or three, it could be six, or in the case of a huge wave, it could be in the double digits. However, the difficulty needs to ramp up throughout the level, and the way it's done in PvZ is through wave points. Similar to how each plant costs a certain amount of sun, each zombie costs a certain amount of wave points, and the game only has a limited amount of wave points to spend each wave. On the first wave, it only has one wave point, and there's only one zombie in the game that costs just one wave point. The basic zombie. O okay, the pea shooter zombie does two, you pedants. So, the first wave always consists of just one basic zombie in regular levels. After three waves, the number of waypoints the game can spend increases by one. So, on wave four, the game has two waypoints, wave seven, three waypoints, etc. Huge waves are a bit weird in terms of how they scale with waypoints, but we don't need to get into that. What's important to understand is that each zombie's type has a certain amount of waypoints they cost. A basic zombie is one, a conehead is two, a dolphin is three, a buckethead is four, etc. Another thing you need to understand is that what zombies spawn is decided before the level starts. This is how preview strats work. The preview on the right side of the screen gives a rough indication of the ratio of zombies types in a level. In most cases, this works great. However, as you can probably guess, there's one quirk that needs to be accounted for. The bobsled team cannot spawn without a sufficiently long enough ice trail, and so whether they are allowed to spawn or not depends on how the player has played the level. But if the zombie spawns are decided at the start of the level, how does this work? Well, it's quite simple. If a wave has a bobsled and there's an ice trail of sufficient length on the screen, the game will spawn a bobsled. However, if a wave has a bobsled and there's not an ice trail of sufficient length on the screen, it instead sends four basic zombies. Simple, right? Except for one thing. A bobsled costs three wave points, while a basic zombie costs only one. Effectively, Bobsled waves inflate the wave points a game can spend. Bobsled teams are designed to basically punish the player for letting a zomboni get too far and not removing the ice trail. It's a ton of zombies on one lane, they can get really far depending on how long the ice trail is, they move very fast in the bobsled, and the inflation of wave points is just another thing to add on to that. However, I think it was a slight oversight by the devs to not recognise that this waypoint inflation remains even without the ice trail, although some of the runners disagree with me there. Either way though, the end result is the same. Bobsled waves inflate the wave points. Specifically, there's way more basic zombies than there usually are, which can be frustrating when there aren't any good chomper targets at activating the 50% rule. Oh, and don't worry, bobsleds interact with the 50% rule extremely weirdly. We'll get there. Bobsled waves are especially frustrating on wave 19 or wave 29. On these waves, you need to kill every zombie from that wave to progress to the huge wave. Since you need zombonies to be able to spawn in order for bobsleds to be able to spawn, these are the most variable waves in the game. Wave 19 could be as simple as a single zomboni, which is the dream scenario. One chomper or squash and it's over. But it could also be nine basic zombies, two more than the usual limit. And in these situations, you really have no choice but to find the best squash, add a wee peter onto one stack, chomper another, and 
just take a slow wave if you have extra body blocking from previous waves. So the bobsled team breaks the technical rules of the game, but nobody tends to notice that, especially if you're playing casually. At least the basic fundamentals of the game remain the same. Some flowers produce sun, zombies walk to the left, most of the time, and firepower shoots when a zombie is in range. W wait, w what? W what is happening?! <laughs> most of the things in this video I do have some sort of explanation for, even if the ex explanation is strange and the effect even stranger, but I really have no idea what's happening in this clip. If a bobsled is off screen, they can still be damaged by peas and the plants are still able to see them. I, I have no idea why this happens. Here's something I do have an explanation for though, although the explanation basically just amounts to it's bugged, which I'm sure you could have never guessed based on the clip and my reaction to it. What? <laughs> that wasn't wave nine. Oh wait. I, I'm I'm so lost. I'm so I'm I'm lost. I'm confused. I'm scared. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a bobsled, but there was no ice. Didn't I tell you earlier that bobsleds could only spawn on a row with a sufficiently long enough ice trail? Let's rewind a bit. If a wave has a bobsled and there's an ice trail of sufficient length on the screen, the game will spawn a bobsled. Did you catch it? That's exactly how it works, and that's exactly the issue. The game checks if there is an ice trail of sufficient length, and then it spawns a bobsled on a lane with an ice trail. It doesn't need to spawn on the long ice trail, it can spawn on any ice trail. In this specific instance, there might have been a pixel of ice, or maybe the ice trail starts off screen slightly. That's all well and good, but so far, it seems like only the wavepoint discrepancy will actually impact speedruns in 99% of cases. Most of the time, you won't have any ice trails of sufficient length, and Bob says won't be spawning. What about the interactions with the 50% rule? Don't worry, we're building up to that. But there are a couple more weird quirks about the Bob says that do actually impact speedruns. First of all, the preview. The preview is what we call the white side of the screen that shows you the zombies you're going to fight before the level starts. The first thing you might notice is that none of the ending percent levels show the bobsled in the preview. That part doesn't impact speedruns, but it is an interesting quirk that makes the bobsled even more unnoticeable. However, the preview does have a very important impact on PvZ speedruns. It gives you a rough guideline on how many of each type of zombie you're going to see. For example, on 1.3, you might get a 2 cone 7 normal preview. This means that 20 to 29.99% of the zombies, discounting the flag zombie, are going to be coneheads, and 70 to 79.99% of the zombies, discounting the flag zombie again, are going to be normal zombies. On 1.3 in specific, the preview actually gives us complete information due to how short the level is, and so we know exactly how many of each type of zombie we're going to get before the level even begins. Sometimes, you even take different plants depending on what preview you get, such as if 4.7 has one cone and a low amount of normal zombies. That encourages a lot of bucket heads, and so you usually drop Scaredy Shroom in favour of bringing another instant kill. So how are bobsleds relevant? Well, they don't appear on the preview, but in 99.9% .9 of cases there will only be one gimmick zombie on the preview anyways. It's exceptionally rare for there to be multiple, in any percent at least. The issue is that bobsleds don't count for the preview at all. They aren't just hidden from the preview, they don't count. If you had a level which had 14 cones, 18 basics, 14 bobsleds, two zombonies and two flag zombies, which is possible on 3-6, then the calculation for the preview would look like this. 14 cones plus 18 basics plus 2 zombonies is equal to 34 total zombies. 14 34ths is roughly 41%, and 18 34ths is roughly 53%. So the preview would be 4 cones, 5 normals. A 4 cone, 5 normal preview, despite there being 74 total normal zombies compared to only 14 cone heads. This clip sums it up pretty well. Oh! Oh boy, a free cone and five normal preview. Hmm, I wonder. This is probably going to have a lot of cones and some normals, but not an overwhelming amount, surely. Yes, look at all these cones. These are all these cones. Oh, that's a lot of normals, huh? Oh, that, that's a that's a lot of. Uh, okay, that's a lot of normals. That's a. Okay, uh, wow, okay, there, there's, a, there's a lot of norm. Wow, there is a. Uh, uh, um, this is not. This is not what I expected from this preview. Uh, okay. What don't bobsleds mess up? Well, surely they don't mess up the order the zombies spawn in. 
that really important thing that allows you to predict where the next zombies are most likely to be. Surely. Surely they don't mess that up, right? 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 Okay, well, they don't completely mess it up, but there is technically a very subtle difference in what order the zombies spawn. Extremely subtle, and I'm gonna have to use my A-level in maths to explain it. Yeah, I, I wasn't lying when I said this video was going to get real technical. <laughs> so, the order in which zombies spawn is important. The most recent that a zombie spawned in a row, the less likely it is that the next zombie will spawn in the same row. But what about when multiple zombies spawn in the same wave? Well, one of the zombies is still spawned first, but there's no way of telling which one. Right? Well, there actually is. Kind of. Let's take a really basic example of a wave. A conehead plus basic zombie in a level where only coneheads and basic zombies can spawn. So, what's the chance that the conehead was spawned first? Your first instinct is probably 50%. Or, well, it would be if I wasn't obviously leading somewhere with this. But it is actually 66.67%. Let's follow the game spawning logic for a moment. This wave has three wave points and two types of zombies both with an equal weight, but coneheads cost two waypoints while basics cost one. So the game checks if it has enough waypoints to spawn cones and basics, which it does, and then it randomly chooses one. Since they both have an equal weight, it is a 50-50 as to which zombie it spawns. For now, let's say it's a conehead. Now the game has only one waypoint left to spend. It can't afford coneheads, so it will be a basic zombie 100% of the time. So 50% of the time, the game spawns a conehead first and then a basic second. Now, let's go back to that first spawn. Instead of a conehead, the game could instead spawn a basic zombie first 50% of the time. After that, the game has two waypoints, so it could spawn a conehead or a basic zombie, each with a 50% chance. 50% of the time it will choose a conehead and will have no more waypoints to spend, while the other 50% of the time it will choose another basic zombie. After that, it has a 100% chance to spawn another basic. So, overall, there is a 50% chance that the game spawns a conehead and then a basic a 25% chance that the game will spawn a basic and then a conehead, and a 25% chance that the game spawns three basics. While this does mean that there is a 50% chance that a conehead is the first spawn, and a 50% chance that a basic is the first spawn, we have to remember that we have further information. We know that the game actually spawned a conehead and a basic. While we don't know the order for sure, we do know what spawned. So we can just ignore the branch where three basics spawn instead of a conehead. Now, the percentage signs don't make too much sense anymore, considering that it's not out of 100. So if we instead think of these as weights, we can see that the path where the conehead is spawned first is twice as likely as the path where it spawns second. The total weight is 75, and 50 divided by 75 is equivalent to two thirds, 66.67%. Now, this is a pattern present throughout the whole game. The zombies with more waypoints are more likely to be spawned first. If you're curious about how weights affect things, they don't. Since we already know for a fact that these zombies did spawn, the likelihood of them spawning doesn't matter and ends up cancelling out. A zombie with four wave points is four times more likely to be spawned first than a zombie with one wave point, or two times more likely than a zombie with two wave points. So that was a long tangent, how does it relate to bobsleds? Well, since bobsleds cost three wave points, that makes them more likely to be spawned first than a conehead. That's all fine and dandy when it's on the ice trail, but without the ice trail? We've already covered that coneheads are meant to be more likely to be spawned first than basics, but in this circumstance, that's reversed. The basic zombies are more likely to be spawned first. Now, there's not a ton of consequences for that. If anything, it's helpful. You chomp a conehead in the wave and you can plant a potato mine behind it because it's slightly more likely that the next wave doesn't spawn there, as that was probably the most recent spawn. But it goes to show just how much bobsleds mess up the game and just make it... weird. But I've saved the best to last, the mechanic that caused me to make this video. The thing that consistently confuses everyone who interacts with bobsleds. And this time, it's to do with the actual bobsled, not the basic zombies that replace it. So, how does the 50% rule interact with the bobsled team? First, a refresher on what the 50% rule is, or maybe it's your first time hearing it. The 50% rule dictates that once you have depleted 35-50% to of the current wave's health, the next wave will spawn. Otherwise, you need to wait 25-31 to 31 seconds for it to spawn. If it's the wave directly before the huge wave, often called wave 9 by the community, you must completely kill all the zombies from the current wave. This is the main reason we can even speedrun plants with zombies. Without this, the speedrun would be dreadfully boring. But there's a few zombies that interact with the 50% rule a bit... weirdly. And if it's weird, you know bobsleds are involved. So let's look at the bobsled team's stats. The bobsled is worth 300 HP while each of the four bobsled zombies are the same as a basic zombie, 
270 HP. So, you might think that in a wave with just the bobsled team, there is immediately 300 plus 270 times 4 HP, or 1380 total, which means you need to deal 483 to 690 damage total. That would mean getting rid of a bobsled and killing one, maybe one and a half bobsled team members. That would make sense, so of course, that's not how it works. <laughs> See, the game doesn't actually count the bobsled team members as part of a wave until they're out of the sled. So, initially, the wave consists of only the HP of the sled, then a moment after the sled is destroyed, the bobsled zombie's HP is added to the wave. Okay, so how does it work then? Let's say you have a wave with two bobsleds. This should be simple. It's the 50% rule, so killing one bobsled should activate the rule. At least, if both are in the same state. So, if both bobsleds don't have their sled broken and one dies, the 50% rule is activated. If both bobsleds are out of their sled and one dies, the 50% rule is activated. If one is in and one is out, you need to kill the one out of the sled to activate the 50% rule. Right? That... That should be how it works. Well, here's me trying to do exactly that. I had two bobsleds, one was on a long ice trail and one was on a short ice trail. This was six months ago, when I was much less familiar with bobsleds outside of knowing that they're weird. So, to be safe, I waited until both were out of their sleds to the jalapeno. And... Nothing. How the hell has that happened? Well, there's two things I got wrong in this explanation. One of the things, I can completely understand why PopCap implemented it this way. And one, where I absolutely cannot. The first thing is a semantics issue in 99% of cases. When we talk about the 50% rule, we always say we have to deplete 35-50% to of the current wave's health. This is effectively true in most cases, but it isn't actually how the game handles it. Instead, it takes the health at the start of the wave and multiplies it by a range from 0.5 to 0.65, or 50% to 65%. It then takes the result and constantly checks to see if the current health of a wave is below this number. Again, this effectively means the same thing as what everyone usually says. But because bobsleds basically add health to the wave midway through, this has some interesting effects. If this is a wave comprised of a single bobsled and two basic zombies, the wave starts with 840 HP, right? That means you need to get to 420 to 546 HP total. Let's say it's exactly in the middle, 483. When the bobsled breaks, the 300 HP from the bobsled is gone, but now you get four extra basic zombies. This doesn't change the fact that you need to be at or below 483 HP to activate the 50% rule. So you still have to kill the two basic zombies and then two members of a bobsled team. And it still won't be enough. You will also need to damage the third member slightly. 3 P's worth. That's pretty absurd considering we would normally consider that a 50% rule where you only need to deplete 42.5% of a wave's health. But wait a moment. Let's go back to that example with the two bobsleds. As Pass Bulbasaur points out, the 50% rule still should have activated. If you recall my explanation earlier. See, the game doesn't actually count the bobsled team members as part of a wave until they're out of the sled. So, initially, the wave consists of only the HP of the sled, then a moment after the sled is destroyed, the bobsled zombie's HP is added to the wave. You see, when the bobsled breaks, there is a tiny window of time where the health from the bobsled is removed, but the health from the team members is yet to be added. This moment is key to going fast when bobsleds are plentiful. So, at the start of this wave, there is 600 HP total from the two bobsleds. 50-65% to 65 of that is 300-390 to 390 HP. If I get the worst possible scenario, 50% exactly, then that means I need to get to 300 HP total in the wave for the 50% rule to activate. Well, when this bobsled is destroyed, there's a brief period where I'm at exactly 300 HP. So, why doesn't it activate? And this is where everyone learns something that makes absolutely no sense. At the start of a wave, the bobsled team doesn't only count the health of the bobsled. It doesn't count the health of the bobsled and the bobsled members. No, it counts the health of the bobsled and the health of one of its members. Why? Who knows? But it means that the starting health isn't 300, but 570. When the bobsled breaks, it removes the bobsled's health and then adds on the remaining three members. So, at the time of the bobsled breaking, I was at a total of 840 HP when I needed to reach, in the best case scenario, 741 HP. So all the maths I've done in this 50% rule section has been a bit misleading for the purpose of this reveal. So, just for clarity's sake, in a situation with one bobsled and two basics, you need to reach 638 HP on average, not 483. 
That means you need to kill the two basics plus one and a half members of the bobsled team. So it's a tad more reasonable, although still absurd. So yeah, that's bobsleds. They are the weirdest zombie in this game. But thankfully, they're confined only to four levels in the adventure mode. Wait, what's that? They're one of the only zombies to get their own special minigame? Oh dear god. That sort of thing, it, it could drive a man insane. Or maybe even a cow. What could the speedrun of this minigame possibly look like? It must be the most cursed, terrifying and nonsensical level of the lot. It must be infuriating to speedrun. Well, funnily enough, Bob's Bonanza is home to a contender for the coolest strategy we do in speedruns. It's a four flag level that is faster than the world record for some of the three flag levels in any percent, despite having an extended waiting period at the start of the stage. Basically, Bob said Bonanza is brilliant. That's not to say it doesn't have some of its own quirks. The game can cheat the waypoint system here by going over the amount it technically should. So, although Bob says costs three waypoints and Zombonis cost seven, Wave 1 can be either a single Bob said or a single Zombone. Wave 10 can have either four basic zombies and a Zombone, or four basic zombies and two Bob sleds, or four basic zombies and a Zomboni and a Bob Sled. I mean, what did you expect? It's called Bob Sled Bonanza, it has to be weird. But anyways, onto the speedrun strat. First of all, these are the plants we take. The first thing you might recognise is that we have no way to defend the pool with firepower. We take Lilybad, sure, but our only offensive plants are Spike Reed and Spike Rock, which can't be placed in the pool. If you remember your own playthrough of Bob Sled Bonanza, you might recall that there are a ton of basic zombies that spawn on this level, so we definitely need something for them. Well, you can probably guess by this point that those weren't basic zombies. They were bobsleds masquerading as basic zombies. As long as you have an ice trail of sufficient length on the board, the only basic zombies you'll be getting are in the huge waves, and those can be dealt with through doom shrooms, mowers, and jalapenos. The magic of this strat is all in the setup. The goal is to have a single ice trail on the board, as short as it possibly can be. This means that every single bobsled is funneled into the same lane, and their bobsled is destroyed almost instantly. Meanwhile, Every other lane has a spike rock on it, so any zombies that spawn get instantly destroyed and activate the 50% rule due to their insane amount of health. We saw earlier in the video how having two bobsleds in the same wave can get funky, but that was only because they spawned on different ice trails. When they spawn in the same ice trail, their bobsled disappears at the same time, and so bobsleds have the same moment of the bobsled being removed but the three other team members not being added. So, every wave comprised solely of bobsleds is instantly activated, as the bobsled's 300 HP is worth more than the single team member's 270 HP. Every wave comprised solely of Zombonis is instantly activated. Every wave with a mix of the two is instantly activated. The only time a wave might not be instantly activated is when a Zomboni spawns on this short ice trail. But with all the bobsleds being funneled into that row, the chance of that happening is unlikely. And if it does, that's why we bring Cherry. Doom can also be used, although you do need to make sure you can instantly kill the entirety of Rave 9 as well, since you can't just progress to the huge wave by breaking the bobsled, you also need to kill its members in that case. All of that creates an epic level, and the world record is awesome to watch, and features what is perhaps the greatest pop-off in PvZ speedrun history, considering that Moo was grinding for world record for 11,500 attempts. I've linked it in the description below, it's really satisfying. Every wave in the last three flags is instantly activated, with the same exact time for each flag. 107.54. So yeah, Bob sets are really, really weird, but that weirdness also helped to create one of the best speedrun levels in the entire game. It doesn't change the fact that they're really weird in basically every other situation, and that they seem to break fundamental mechanics, but you know, at least we got something cool from it. And hey, you just sat through a video which has a 4500 word script about a zombie that's barely in a game from 2009. And I wrote it. So. We can't really make too much fun of bobsleds of being weird, can't we?